Sean here. Welcome to yet another busy Royal Week. And what a week it's been. So don't go anywhere as we take you through all the exciting stories that have appeared in the last seven days of our beloved British Royal Family. Now, as we all know, we're all going through a very difficult time right now, but even our British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson's had a very tough week by having the mild symptoms of the virus. But our sturdy Queen, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, decided, well, that didn't actually stop business, and so did Boris, because they held their weekly conference by telephone. Now, as you know, she's self-isolating at Windsor Castle, along with the Duke of Edinburgh, and Boris is in the number 10 bunker, and we are all wishing him the very best to get very well. But of course, he needs to inform the Queen exactly what's going on with the government, his government, and how he's handling this particular crisis. The Queen herself, we're told, is in excellent health, as is the Duke of Edinburgh. But we wish all of them well, including, of course, Matt Hancock, our Health Secretary, and any other British MPs that are currently suffering on our behalf to try and make the world a lot better. Now, as you know, when you have a wedding, there's always one person that you didn't invite that possibly you should have done. And this could be said of the case of Harry and Meghan. Now, they decided not to invite President Trump to their spectacular wedding at, of course, Windsor Castle just 18, 19 months ago. Apparently, he wasn't too upset, or was he? Now, Meghan and Harry also decided that they were going to snub, shall we say, uh, President Trump's visit when he came along to see Her Majesty the Queen. Well, we know Harry met him very briefly. Now, here's the deal. Harry and Meghan have decided to skip from Canada to LA. And what's the thing they need? Well, security. And what's the thing that President Trump is now not offering? Well, security. He's basically said he welcomes them, obviously, into his country. However, if they need their own security, then they have to pay it themselves. Now, we do know this, that the Queen quite likes President Trump, thinks he's a bit of a character. If you remember that walking scene where she was walking through some of the trees in Buckingham Palace with uh, David Attenborough, and she said, oh, what's that noise? Oh, it could be possibly President Trump in one of his planes. So we know that she's got a bit of a give and take relationship with him. However, Harry and Meghan do need to make some money of their own. And in this very present climate, it's going to be rather difficult. Now, we do know that Harry wanted to embark on some new charitable work. But as I say, everybody's going to be looking at other ways to make money. And this is going to be a very difficult time to secure the now non-senior members of the former British royal family, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. But there's one person they can't count on, and that's President Trump. Now, we had also some rather sad news about His Royal Highness Prince Charles. Uh, they had found out over a week ago that Prince Charles was suffering from very mild symptoms of coronavirus. But the good news is that Charles is now, like many people, getting through this. He's put himself in self-isolation. I wonder how Camilla feels about that. But he's gone back up to Balmoral. We know that the Prince is still busy, hard at work because they've posted pictures online. And who could forget, of course, that along with Camilla, Prince Charles joined in the clapping for the NHS, showing us that everybody, of course, is on board trying to beat this terrible situation. Prince Charles, we can tell you now as an update, is uh, faring very well. He's working apparently every day and has told people not to worry. One of the people that did want to return was Prince Harry. But of course, in this climate, travel is impossible. So Prince Charles has said, stay where you are, I'm fine. We'd like to wish His Royal Highness Prince Charles the very best of health. Now, by the time you're viewing this, you may know, of course, or may have even seen the stream of Meghan's first post-royal venture. That is the Disney documentary all about a charitable trust regarding elephants. Now, here's some inside news, because while Meghan provides a voiceover and she's very kindly donated her fee to the charity, what we can tell you is that Disney did insist that the pretext was on the poster. So you will see, of course, it says Meghan Duchess of Sussex. That's why they've paid so much for the use of Meghan's voice. Now, Disney, of course, are hoping that this could be the start of a very fruitful relationship. Forget what you've read about Marvel characters, things like that. What Meghan truly would like to do would be become involved with the Disney organisation, making further charitable documentaries, but perhaps providing a voiceover of one of the very famous Disney remakes. On that, I'll keep you posted. Now, one of the most heartwarming stories of the week, of course, was when 
all the British public came out to clap for our very wonderful NHS workers. And when I say everyone, I truly mean everyone. Senior members of the British royal family and of course who could not be warmed by this beautiful video of, of course, Prince George, Prince Louis and Princess Charlotte all clapping. Now they did it all on their own and we do believe that it was filmed by Catherine herself. If you haven't seen the video, do check it out, but it just shows what, of course, the spirit of the nation is hoping to achieve. And not only do we, of course, wish everyone well, but if you haven't done it yet, why not clap for the NHX now? If you're not sure, just check out this wonderful video. Now, as we told you here on this show previously, one of the big events of the year is the spectacular trooping of the colour. It really is one of the highlights of the British summer and people around the world flock to see this brilliant event. It's the chance where we get to see the Royals truly dress up and more like up close and personal. And it was lovely actually last year to see Her Majesty the Queen striding out in that beautiful coach. Of course, it's so historical. Now, that particular event obviously is in hold. But what we can tell you is the palace told me that they're looking at ways of finding a way of actually still celebrating that. Now, we're not quite sure how. Obviously, at this stage, we can't say whether there would be a public event. We hope there is. But my guess is this, that we can look forward to a very best of all the trooping of the colours, possibly highlighting over 60 years of the wonderful reign of Queen Elizabeth. When I know, you'll know. Now, as many know, one of my favourite roles is the very warm and very friendly Sarah, Duchess of York. And she posted a wonderful message on her Instagram and other social media pages. Basically, it was an inspirational message reaching out to people and, and kind of saying, look, you know, we're all going through this difficult time. There's some wonderful words that she did write. So do check it out. And as I say, you can always rely on Fergie, whatever you may think of her, to cheer the nation up. I hope you've enjoyed our very short edition of this week's Royal Week and do let me know your thoughts, what you think. You can subscribe below, like and share, don't forget. And of course, let me know what your highlights have been of this very busy British Royal Week. I'm Neil Sean. Until next time, I'll see you then. Thank you so much.